Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we'll be making a React component using TypeScript. The advantage of using TypeScript is that you'll have compile time type checking for all of your components which will help you find bugs earlier. Also depending on which editor you're using, you'll have some autocomplete options to help you know which properties are available to you. So let's begin. I've got a very basic React project up and running and within my project I have a folder called models and inside of that I have a file called user.ts. User.ts is a class that represents a user. It has three properties, username, email, and an optional age. And what we're going to do in this video is create two components for viewing and editing instances of the user class. So to start off with, let's create a basic skeleton component just to make sure everything's working. So in my components folder, I'm going to create a file called userview.tsx. And I'm also going to create a corresponding file called userview.css. And we're just going to have some basic styles of my CSS. Let's create a class called userView-container. And let's set its text align to center. Give it a border of one pixel. And let's give it some padding. And in my userView.tsx, we're going to create a function component. So let's import React from React. Let's also import our user model from models slash user and let's import our CSS file. So to create a function component we will say const user view and give it the type of react.function component and this will be defined as a function that takes some properties and returns us some UI. So let's return a div with the class name equal to user view dash container. We'll put some text in here and finally, we can export our component. And to test it out, let's try to display this in our app.tsx file. So the first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and import our user model, just in case. And we'll import our user view from components slash user view. And down here, we will display our user view. Save and refresh. And now we see the text user view appearing, so everything is working properly so far. OK, so the key to using TypeScript in your React components is to give the properties and state a template. So we're going to come back into our user view component, and we're going to define a new type called props. And that type consists of a property called user, which is of type user. And we're going to use that type template uh, for our function component. So we'll add these brackets here and say this function component is of type props. So now it knows to expect a property given to it of the name user. Inside of here, let's go ahead and display the properties of our user. So we'll add some spans and we'll say username. And we'll display props.user.username. Just copy and paste this for our email and age. So I'll say email here, props.user.email. And for age, props.user.age. Now, you may have noticed that when I saved and refreshed, I got an error saying it failed to compile. And the reason is because the property user was missing when we showed our user view. Because now that we've defined the function component with these properties, it's expecting a property called user. And that's actually good because that prevented potentially a bug after we had built the project. So I'm going to come back to my app.tsx and I'm going to set this up so that we can pass in a user to our user view and hopefully see these properties. So I'll come over here and I'm going to create a user and add it to the app's state. So let's create, let's say let user equal new user. And we'll say the name is Paul and the email will just be paul at gmail.com. And we'll say this.state equals an object with a property named user equal to user. So now we have our user, and we can go ahead and pass it in to our user view component. You see we've got the squiggly lines here indicating there's an error. So when I click space and I ty start typing, you can see that I also get some autocomplete telling me I need a property called user. So we'll say user equals this.state.user. Save and refresh. And now you can see we have a username, Paul, email, 
and age. And it looks a little bit weird, so let's go back to the component. And it looks like I accidentally added some extra brackets here. And also add in some line breaks to make it look a little bit nicer. Perfect. So we can see the age is blank because we didn't give it an age, but we can come back to our app and give the user an age. So say user.age equals 25. And there we have our age. So that's how to make a simple function component. And I'd recommend using this template for view only components. The next thing we want to do is create a component that allows us to edit a user instance. So we're going to come into our components and we're going to create two more files. One of them is going to be called useredit.tsx and one of them will be useredit.css. So let's go ahead and set up some basic styling for our CSS. So we'll create a class called useredit-container. And we'll give it again text align of center. We'll give it a border. Let's set this one to have a red border. And we'll also give it some padding. Okay, for our edit component, we're going to first import React from React. Then we're going to import user from our models folder. And we will import our CSS, useredit.css. And this one we're actually going to make as a class. So we'll export default class user edit, which extends a react.component. We'll give it a constructor. And we'll give it a render method. And for now, that render method is just going to return an empty div, the class name equal to user edit container. And we'll put some text in here, user edit. And this is just to make sure everything's working properly. We don't need to export at the bottom because we've already exported here. So we'll save that and come back to our app. Now we're going to import user edit from, from components slash user edit. And down here we will display our user edit. And another error because our properties are of type any and we didn't specify that. So let's just do that right here temporarily. And there we have it. We have our user edit component being displayed. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is set the template type for our component, just like we did with our user view. Now in the user view, we actually used the type word, uh, but for the editor, we're going to use interface, which is just a little bit more flexible. So we're going to create an interface called props, which is going to consist of a property called user of type user. And since this one is editable, we're going to give it a state. So we'll create another interface called state, which looks exactly the same. It has a user named user. And then in our component, we're going to give it the template and we're going to say props and state. Okay, so now our constructor should actually take a property of type props instead of any because we've now defined it as that way. And let's go ahead and initialize our state here. We'll say this.state equals, and we'll say the user is equal to this.props.user. So we're initializing our state's user with the props user that was given to us. Okay, now down here in our render method, rather than just displaying it in a span, let's actually display the data using input components. So we'll create an input here of type equal text, and the value is going to be equal to this.state.user.username. Okay. And let's give it a line break. And go ahead and save and refresh and see how that looks so far. Now, once again, you see we have a compile error because we haven't passed in the user property. So we'll come back to our app, and we want to pass in the same user. So user equals this.state.user. Save and refresh. And now you see that we have the user's name, but now it's inside of a text box, which would enable us to edit it. But currently, we are not handling the editing. So let's come back here. And to handle the editing, we need to add a new property to our input, 
let me add a line here. It's the on change property. I'll say on change equals, and it gives us an event. And we'll say we want to call this dot on username change and pass in that event. And let's go ahead and define that function up here. So we'll say on username change, which takes an event. Now we don't know what the type of the event is, but what we can do is come up here to our imports and we can import form event from React. Okay, and the event is actually a form event of type HTML input element. And that will be useful for us in just a minute. So what we want to do here is we want to call this.setState and we want to set our user state object equal to, we'll use this dot 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 spread operator, this.state.user. What that does is it sets the user to itself because we're only changing one property and then we'll put a comma here and say we want to change the username to be event.currentTarget.value. save and refresh and now we should be able to edit it but we'll you may have noticed that it's not changing it in our view component the reason for that is because we haven't notified our app that the state has changed so what we want to do actually is come up with some way for this change event to notify the app so that the app can update its own state so the way that we'll do that is we'll change our props here and we're going to add an additional prop and that prop is going to be called on value change. And it's a function that takes a user parameter of type user and returns nothing. Now what we can do in our set state is we can call the on value change function. So let's put a sec use the second parameter of set state, which is the callback function. And here we can make a function that's going to call this.props.onValueChange and pass in this.state.user. Okay, if we save and refresh, we'll probably get an error that we're missing the onValueChange property, which is exactly right. So let's go back to our app and add the onValueChange property. So here in our user component, user edit component, we're going to say onValueChange. And there you can see we get the autocomplete. It's going to take a function that gives us a user, and what it's going to do is call this.setState and set the user object to the user that was given to us. So now when I change Paul's name, we can see that it's calling back to the app on value change function, updating the user in that state, and then that's in turn updating our user view component. So when I change Paul, we can see that it changes in the view component. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the same editing options to our email and age properties. So I'm just going to copy and paste this input here and we'll use it for email and age. This one will be age and we're going to create a new function called on I'm sorry, this one will be email. On email change, and we'll use this one as age, and it will be on age change. And we'll copy and paste these functions here. It's going to be on email change and on age change. Now, everything is okay for the email, but the age, if you recall, was defined as a number. So that may be a problem because our event.currentTarget.value is a string, as you can see here. So if I try setting the age, hopefully we get an error, and it looks like we do, um, telling us that we can't set the age, which is a number, to a string. So what we need to do here is say let age equal parse int event dot current target dot value so we're converting that string to an int and then we can set it here and everything should work properly it's perfect 
and I'm trying to type in some letters right now. It won't allow me to because um, parsint would fail in that case. And one last thing I want to mention is if we were to try calling this dot set state, for example, and try to set a property called test equal to test, we would also get an error here because our state was defined as having a property named user, not a property named test. So here we see we get the squiggly line saying there is no property named test. So that's a simple template for creating components in React using TypeScript. This is the template that I've been using and it gives you the advantages of compile time type checking and the autocomplete or IntelliSense as it's sometimes called. Um, so I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.